This is week two of college baseball rankings. Let's get into it. So I think the first few teams, there's not much to say. They're, they did their job the past week, and they beat teams that were worse than them and had a winning record overall. So I think for the most part, they stayed the same for me. I don't know about yourself, but LSU, Wake Forest, Stanford was just an easy one, two, three. Yep, I definitely agree there. Yep, they all played lesser competition, but took care of business. Uh, we did see LSU fall for the first time this season. They got dominated by Iowa one game, but overall had a very commanding week nonetheless and still look like the best team in the country up to this point. Yeah, definitely. And after those first three teams, I think that's when there's a little bit of a discussion between a lot of or, or a few SEC teams that can kind of all vouch for that four spot if just depending on, on who you want to go with. But for me personally... Uh, that four spot did get opened up because Texas A&M had a dreadful week going one and three, first losing to Lamar and then almost getting swept by Portland, luckily enough for them, needing the comeback in their last game against the Pilots in order to not get swept. But yeah, it was a rough week and their offense just was not clicking at all. Thankful for the late game heroics on Sunday. They do get a win on the week, but that was just looking like an absolute disaster. And still was pretty much a disaster of a week for them. They plummet down the rankings, open up that four spot, and that is where I slotted Tennessee this week, jumping over Arkansas, who was previously in our five spot waiting to move up there. Great. So we don't really really need to have a discussion because I also had Tennessee there. Uh, I think they just showed that, you know, there was that lapse the previous week where we didn't really know what Tennessee we were going to see, and they came out just with guns blazing, gave up four runs over the entire week and showed that their pitching staff can just absolutely dominate anybody. And uh, yeah, I think that just proved kind of what people needed to see. Yeah, and then on top of that, Maui Ahuna has officially been cleared and is in the lineup, so they're going to be dangerous as ever moving forward. Yeah, perfect. So Tennessee at number four, and then... I also had Arkansas at number five. They had a decent week, uh, went three and one. Their one loss on the weekend was East Illinois, the, the last game of the series. So they could have gone 4 0, and if they had, they might have been able to uh, get up into that four spot. But having that one loss to a subpar opponent doesn't help, and they stay in that five spot for me. Yep, definitely agree there. Was a good week for them overall, uh, but like you said, probably needed that four. 4-0 week to move up into the four spot, but totally fine not to be able to sweep through an entire week. Yep, definitely. And then after that, I have Ole Miss jumping up one spot since Texas A&M. I have moving uh, down a little bit further, but they had a good weekend, a good week overall, 3-1. and one. They faced Arkansas State midweek, which is you expect them to win, and then facing Maryland on the weekend who we had at number 14. Before that, uh, besides the loss that Ole Miss had, the offense looked really good. So I think uh, for the most part, as long as those hitters keep hitting, they're they're a very dangerous team and deserve to be in the top 10. Yeah, I mean, Ole Miss drops that Friday game their first time without Hunter Elliott available, but it was still very impressive for them to go 3-1 and one on the week and win that series against Maryland without him available. And like you mentioned, the offense just took care of business. And if they continue to do that, it may not matter all that much whether Hunter Elliott's available or not. Definitely. The next team that I have in the rankings for myself is Louisville. Also just following Ole Miss up one spot uh, to number seven now, going three and one, one on the week, going against Xavier midweek, and then Bowling Green over the weekend. Not any crazy results, but they did their job. Uh, won the weekend series, won their midweek, and I think that going up one spot is, is fine from that perspective. Yeah, I actually had Louisville hanging in the eight spot here with Vandy jumping them just because of the impressive series win over a solid UCLA group there. Uh, the midweek struggles continue for Vandy where they seem to just continue to lose these midweeks against subpar competition randomly, but that was a very impressive series win over a solid UCLA squad. Yeah, definitely. That series between Vandy and UCLA was extremely good. Just a battle from both sides and both looked like extremely polished teams for the most part. But yeah, getting that loss midweek against Central Arkansas 
making their record three and two on the week. Just uh, gave it that little touchback for, for me to just be right behind Louisville, but I could see it going either way. I think they're kind of in that same category at the moment, and for me personally, it was just getting that little knock for uh, facing and losing to Central Arkansas, even though they faced a very good UCLA team and, and won the series there. Yeah, I'm fine with going Louisville here. We can punish Vandy a bit for dropping that midweek. Yeah, I mean, if they if they beat Central Arkansas, then there's no doubt that they deserve to jump up that to uh, over Louisville if they go 4-1. and one. Yeah, and that just goes to show how these midweek games can make or break your week at the end of things. So after Louisville and Vandy, I have Florida going up one spot as well, going 4-1 and one on the weekend, uh, or on the week. They had a midweek kind of series against USF where they split, but then sweeped Cincinnati on the weekend, giving them that 4-0 overall record. They did a good job, beat the teams that they needed to beat, and uh, yep, deserved to go up one spot. Yep, not a whole lot to it. Absolutely dominated that weekend series. Took care of business 3-1 and one on the week. It's just an easy move up one spot. Yep, similar to uh, Louisville there. And then after that is where I slotted in Texas A&M. Uh, just think that they're still a decent team that has a lot to prove now, uh, that they can get their offense going, but they have the pieces around that they de- definitely can be a top team in the nation, and I didn't want to drop them too far. But Yeah, I really struggle with where to place this Texas A&M team because I feel like this 10 through 16 area is a bunch of solid teams and a lot of them have played some decent competition so far and so it was very tough i have texas a&m a little further down but completely understand the point of they are a solid squad and it's just sometimes early in the season those offensive woes happen and i have no doubt they'll get it together late in the year definitely going to be a potential college world series team regardless just a rough week, but for me in the 10 spot, I actually jumped up East Carolina after their impressive 2-0 series win over North Carolina. Couldn't play three games due to the weather, but uh, just impressive win over a solid North Carolina team. That was a hard-fought series. was super fun to watch. Uh, was an awesome environment at the game in East Carolina. Sold-out crowd. Uh, just a super impressive series win from them. Yeah, definitely. I had them right after... Texas A&M in that 11 spot, so I can definitely uh, see that merit. The only reason why I had them right below them is that midweek loss at Campbell. I guess it was away, but still it's uh, not the best look. Campbell looks to be a pretty decent squad, but yeah, I mean, a, a weekend win going 2-0 and against UNC, it was like a home-and-home home kind of deal. Not getting that third game is uh, a little costly just to kind of get that prove it game if if east carolina was able to sweep a three game set i think that would have been amazing for their overall brand and just boosting them way higher in the rankings i think this is a a great week that east carolina going two and one is able to just like jump a bunch of teams because in our rankings previously from last week a bunch of teams at that low uh like 10 to 15 went two and two or lost their weekend so that was a uh extremely beneficial for East Carolina and being able to, to jump up this high. And I could definitely uh, agree with you that they can be in that 10 spot there. And then after Texas A&M at 11, the 12 spot, I filled in with Virginia Tech. They went 3-1, and one, beating East Tennessee State in midweek and then winning their weekend series against Bryant. No big names there, but they won and other teams around them didn't. Yeah, I think this... This 10 through 16 area, like I mentioned, gets a little mixy, but I also did have Virginia Tech in this spot. Like you mentioned, a lot of teams in this area went 2-2, two and two, and so Virginia Tech with that 3-1 week uh, winning that series, just pretty easy to slot them in and jump those teams that just had average weeks. Yeah, definitely, and right after that for me, I had their in-state rivals, Virginia, going 4-0, and versus Longwood in their midweek and then sweeping Columbia. They absolutely rake, just like we mentioned preseason. This offense looks like it can be like an absolute monster, and they're proving that so far at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I actually like that move from Virginia there. Um, I had them a tad lower in mine, but uh, 
I do think that's actually a good fit. Like I mentioned, this whole area is pretty mixy, so you can go a bunch of ways with it. Like you mentioned, the 4-0 week, and they just they just dominated easy competition, took care of business, and so I don't mind slotting them up here. Definitely. The other teams, we'll mention them right now, that could be in this area would be like UNC, UCLA, I guess TCU also would, would be right there. They all went 2-2 two and two the past week and had decent games, but also didn't look their best at times, so... Right after that, we'll we'll discuss the uh, those three teams probably as as those for the mid fifteen ish area. After Virginia Tech and Virginia, the fourteen spot can be a lot of uh, different teams. Just which direction you want to go. A lot of two and two teams like TCU, UNC, and UCLA could all slot in here. Uh, TCU obviously played against Florida State, lost that series, was able to salvage it on the last day and get a win there. So that was pretty huge for them to not completely drop way down there, even after their amazing week one. It's uh, tough to lose a weekend series against a team that isn't ranked. Yeah, and like you mentioned, TCU had one of the most impressive weeks one, so we were very high on this team heading into the week, and Florida State went in there and dominated them, really dominated those first two days, and they had a 3-1 and one record on the week, up to 6-1 and one overall, and I had them right here in this mix with these teams in this 15-ish spot. Um, I just thought that was one of the more impressive series wins of the year so far. There haven't hasn't been a lot of high-level series. But this was one of them, and that was an impressive win for them to go on the road and dominate TCU there. Yeah, the other teams to mention are UCLA, who we kind of touched on earlier. They went 2-2 two and two on the week, facing Pepperdine in midweek, and then losing their weekend series at Vandy. So even though they, uh, they lost the series, still went 2-2, two and two, so can't really punish them too far from my perspective by uh, facing a really good team that we have very high in the rankings. Kind of similar with uh, North Carolina, even though they got technically swept in their two games that they faced versus East Carolina, uh, but they also went two and two because they had two midweeks against lesser opponents. So it's hard to kind of shuffle these teams around, especially with Florida State definitely jumping into the rankings this week. So not really sure exactly how it all pans out. We have other teams as well doing very well, like Oklahoma State. Uh, had a great weekend, and they kind of proved that they aren't in that scuffling area that many people might have thought they were in. But yeah, tough to decide where we go from here. At 14, for me, I put UCLA in just because they went 2-2. Two two. Look, they didn't have the best week, but going to Vandy and getting a win, that's kind of what you expect from a team that is ranked a little bit worse than, uh, than Vanderbilt. So... Only dropping one spot, I think, is reasonable for a team like that. Yeah, I was having a tough time contemplating whether to put UNC, UCLA in the same order again, since they were right on top of each other last week. And I did the same thing, just moving UCLA one above North Carolina, just because they did pick up a win over Vandy, whereas North Carolina just had the two midweek wins. Uh, not to say that North Carolina played bad on the weekend. They did get swept, but both those games were absolute nail biters, losing uh, 6-5 both times. Uh, definitely not worried about them at all or discouraged by those two losses. I think they're going to be great moving forward. Uh, but like you mentioned, I do have UCLA jumping them just by one spot here for that win on the road at Vandy. Perfect. Yeah, that works with me going UCLA at 14 and then North Carolina at 15. Like you mentioned, they were super competitive games against East Carolina, even though they ended up losing both of them. Uh, they were both 6-5, so it's really uh, just the tiniest margins between those being wins. And uh, yeah, if that happened, then they'd be higher in the rankings and there wouldn't be uh, any reason to, to look past that. So for me, in the next spot at 16, I did have TCU but I think it could easily go in a dif different direction, bringing up a team like Oklahoma State or maybe also Florida State just because they beat them. But it's it's tough to kind of punish a team like TCU for facing really good opponents back-to-back -back weeks, doing amazing the first week and just kind of falling a little bit short in week two against Florida State. Uh, and having Florida State as this team that is doing really well and is definitely deserving to be ranked kind of shows that 
these TCU losses aren't as bad as they may seem. Yeah, this was a situation where, like you mentioned, don't want to punish TCU for going against some so much high-level competition early in the season, but I did slot in Florida State ahead of them just for that head-to-head, especially since it was at TCU. Uh, I think if this was Florida State, maybe a different story. You keep TCU up there just because of the schedule, like you mentioned, but head-to-head, uh, in Fort Worth, I give I gave FSU the nod here. Yeah, I think that's reasonable to put in. With Florida State, they did have a pretty easy schedule before this, but looking forward now, I think they have a lot of prove-it weekends. So if they deserve to be at a rank like this, they'll have their work cut out for them uh, in the future, and they could definitely go up or go down a lot over the next few weeks. So yeah, having Florida State at 16 and TCU at 17 is fine by me. In that 18 spot, I do think Oklahoma State is the worthy team there with just how everywhere everywhere else kind of fell around them. And Oklahoma State was a team that we previously said deserves to rise up quicker than potentially other teams. And, and just because they do have that potential to, to really be a top-notch team. Yeah, I agree. I also had Oklahoma State in that spot and feel like there may be a slight dip into the last teams in this ranking after that point there. I feel like there's a there's a level right there that gets dropped after Oklahoma State. In the 19 spot is where I brought Maryland in. They were 14 last week, but they did not have a great week with losing their midweek to West Virginia and then going to Ole Miss and getting one game. I think that is pretty reasonable looking at... Uh, Maryland going to Ole Miss and grabbing a game is kind of what you expect but losing that midweek is pretty detrimental and kind of the only place to go for them was this far down uh, unless you wanted to like make Oklahoma State not not rise at all but it's a tough place for Maryland just because they face great competition you kind of want to not discourage that in a sense but they just uh, had a tough going in the midweek and that kind of settles things. Yeah this- Another one of those cases where the losing the midweek really hurts you. Uh, yeah, like you meant, that's a big, a big series for them to go on the road at Ole Miss, and like you mentioned, it's hard to do much more than just grab a game when you're going up against a top team at their place. Uh, so it's not really that bad of a weekend for them, but dropping that midweek hurts, and this is also where I had them slotted. Right. I mean, a two and two record. You're looking at that and thinking, okay, they're going to be exactly where like UCLA and and TCU or UNC around that area but because they lost that midweek is why they're dropping a little bit further back definitely and then with the last what six spots I think there isn't much movement that really happens besides Southern Miss Miss dropping back and Oregon went 0-3 against UCSB for me personally they're out of the rankings they were at our 20 spot but all the teams around them did exceptionally well so there was no reason to leave them in and drop somebody else back uh, besides potentially Southern Miss but you just can't really uh, can't really stay in the rankings if you're that low in it and getting swept at home. Yeah if you're in that 20 to 25 range early in the season it's tough to lose a series and stay in because there's just so many teams with good records that maybe haven't even played good competition yet but just are looking good so far and so kind of have to give them an opportunity in the rankings to prove themselves as well so I also had Oregon dropping out had Southern Miss dropping a ways down like you said and in this 20 spot is where I moved up Miami yeah same for me with the rest of the teams they kind of just went chalk with Miami jumping up to the 20 spot NC State jumping up to 21 Texas Tech also right behind them to 22 and then Alabama and Oregon State 23 and 24 I had Southern Miss right on the fringe at number 25 just because their record isn't great they gave up a bunch of runs over the weekend against Illinois which you know they might be good but we haven't seen great competition out of the Big Ten recently and they gave up 35 runs over the weekend, and this was one of the concerns that people had preseason was their pitching staff. They lost everybody except their ace, and it showed this weekend. Yeah, I had this top 25 rounding out the exact same way you did, and like you mentioned with Southern Myths, just overall a pretty concerning weekend because you're at home against a Big Ten team. Looks like Illinois may be decent, but that's a series you're definitely expecting to win at home. 
And like you mentioned, they give up 35 runs on the weekend. And that wasn't expected after giving up just three runs in their first four games. Uh, those first couple games, it looked like, okay, maybe they patched their holes and their pitching staff isn't actually going to be hurting like we thought it might be. But it looks like it may be as they gave up a lot of runs to that Illinois offense. Definitely. And the other teams that we just bumped up a few slots there all had essentially flawless weeks. They didn't have any losses. It looks like Miami went 5-0. and Didn't really face great competition, but... Yeah, I mean, if you go 5-0, and you go 5-0. and NC State went 4-0 and against midweek Coastal Carolina, so that's a pretty big midweek win, and then swept Belmont over the weekend. Texas Tech faced uh, Gonzaga on Monday, which who knows what, what that looks like. Gonzaga's had a really rough start to the season, uh, and they faced, what, Tennessee this, this next week, so it's going to be pretty brutal uh, for them if they yeah. can't figure things out. But they, the, yeah, Texas Tech also faced Western Illinois over the weekend. Not a great competition. And Alabama just also faced pretty much nobodies. Yeah, a lot of these teams in here haven't really played tough competition yet, but they're winning, taking care of business. That's why they're hanging on here and just moving up a spot, inching up as teams ahead of them lose their series. Yeah, definitely. And also mentioning Oregon State, they won their midweek against UCSB where Oregon struggled, so seeing that in-state rivalry definitely uh, come to fruition with Oregon just getting absolutely toppled by UCSB uh, later that week, and then Oregon State just had Coppin State and swept them, so pretty easy. Uh, 57-6 to run differential over the week, so they were just crushing teams left and right. Yep, and then should we mes- mention a couple teams that we have just outside knocking on the door as well? Yeah, definitely. I have a list of teams that seems like it just keeps on building uh, from week to week just because a lot of the kind of recognizable teams are doing well. Uh, they're facing kind of lesser competition, but it just they're, they're doing their job and they're right on the fringe of being ranked if they were to face uh, some high level competition coming up and, and did their job or teams at the back end of the top 25 really struggled. So teams like South Carolina probably in that like 26 spot there. There's just waiting for a spot to open up. It seemed like this past week might have been that opportunity, but then Florida State crushes it and just steals it away from them. Also, teams like Campbell, they did pretty well. They beat, uh, like we mentioned, East Carolina midweek. So that kind of proves that they are uh, a team to, to worry about in, in the long run of things. Similarly, GCU has had a pretty good start to the year. Uh, these mid-major teams are always tough to kind of get in that preseason rankings and get them correctly just because there are so many decent mid-major teams that if they get a few good wins against quality competition can be easily in the top 25. Similarly, UCSB sweeping Oregon. Uh, who knows what that Oregon team really looks like. They really struggled on offense, which seemed to be their, their strong suit. But yeah, and then DBU, also another team like that who is doing really well to start out the year as a mid-major yeah quite a few teams knocking on the door here and one you gotta uh tip the cap to as well as portland just taking that series on the road at texas a&m we'll see what they do moving forward but certainly a team to keep an eye on if they continue to play that well against some high level competition but yeah just plenty of teams knocking on the door here waiting for those teams at the bottom of the top 25 to stumble so they can jump in yeah it's tough to know with portland if it was their pitching that was completely stifling that uh, Texas A&M uh, hitting, or if it was just Texas A&M really struggling on offense. It's, it's tough to know where that falls, probably a little bit of a combination of both. It seems like Portland's pitching staff is pretty decent, but you don't really expect a team to, like a, a mid-major team like Portland, which hasn't been uh, the most competitive over the past few years, to go into Texas A&M and kind of dominate them over the weekend and probably should have swept them yeah definitely definitely a surprise for everyone to see that and yeah like we said we'll see if they continue to do it week after week then you have to say it wasn't a fluke and you got to move them in there but time will tell definitely so recapping our top 25 now starting with the number 25 spot we'll count up southern miss number 25 oregon state 24 Alabama 23, Texas Tech 22, NC State 21. At 20, we have Miami, then 19 is Maryland, Oklahoma State 18, TCU 17, Florida State 16, 
15 is North Carolina, 14 UCLA, Virginia 13, Virginia Tech 12, Texas A&M dropping all the way to 11, East Carolina starting the top 10, Florida at 9, Vandy 8, Louisville 7, Ole Miss 6, Arkansas 5, Tennessee 4, Stanford 3, Wake Forest 2, and LSU topping the rankings in Week 2.